graphics GPUs. It actually looks like this, uh, just to get, give you a feeling for what it looks like. It's really, um, it really just works like a huge iPhone. <laughs> Uh, so we've implemented all the gestures that you can do on, on the table, um, and you can think of it as an, as an enormous uh, touch interface. So if you were thinking of buying an iPad, forget about it, this is what you want instead. <laughs> mm -hmm. Steve, I hope you're listening to this. All right. <laughs> all right. okay. So it's a, it's a very nice little device, uh, so if you have the opportunity, please uh, try it out. It's, it's really a hands-on experience. So it gained some traction, and we're trying to roll this out and trying to use it for educational purposes, but also perhaps in the future in, in a more uh, clinical uh, situation. There's a YouTube video that you can download and look at this if you want to convey the information to other people about virtual autopsies. Okay, now we're talking about touch. Uh, let's, let me move on to, to really touching data. Uh, and this is a bit of science fiction now, so, uh, so we're moving into the, the, the really the future. This is not really what the medical doctors are using right now, but I hope they will in the future. So what you're seeing uh, on the left is a, a touch device. It's a, it's a little mechanical pen that has very, very fast step motors inside of the pen. Um, so I can generate a force feedback. So when I virtually touch data, it will generate forces in the pen, so I get a feedback. Okay. So in this particular situation, it's, it's a scan of a living person. I have this pen, and I look at the, at the data, and I move the pen towards the head, and all of a sudden I feel resistance. Okay, so I can feel the skin. If I push a little bit harder, I'll go through the skin, and I can feel the, the bone structure inside. If I push even harder, I'll go through the bone structure, especially close to the ear, where the bone is very soft, and then I can feel the brain inside, and it's a bit of slushy, like this. <laughs> so this is really nice. And you know, to take that even further, this is a heart. And this is also due to these fantastic new scanners that just in, in 0 0.3 seconds, I can scan the whole heart. And I can do that with time resolution. So just looking at this heart, uh, I can play back a video here. And this is Carl Yuan, one of my graduate students who's been working on this project. And he's sitting there in front of the haptic device, the force feedback system. Um, and he's moving his pen uh, towards the heart, and the heart is now beating in front of him. So you can see how the heart is beating. He's taking the pen and he's moving it towards the heart and he's putting it on the heart and then he feels the heartbeats from the real living patient and he can examine how the heart is moving. He can go inside, push inside of the heart and really feel how the valves are moving. And this I think is really the future for, uh, for heart surgeons. I mean it's probably the wet dream for a heart surgeon to be able to, to go inside of the patient's heart before you actually do surgery and do that with high quality resolution data. So this is really neat. Now, we're going um, even further into science fiction, and we heard a little bit about functional MRI. Now, uh, this is re really an interesting project. Uh, uh, MRI is using magnetic fields and radio frequencies to scan off the brain, or any part of the body. Uh, so what we're really getting out of this is information of the structure of the brain, but we can also measure the difference in magnetic properties of blood that's oxygenated and blood that's depleted of oxygen. And that means that it's possible to map out the, the activity of the brain. So this is something that we've been working on, and you just saw Mats, uh, the research engineer, there going into the MRI system, um, and he was wearing goggles, so he could actually see things in the goggles, so I could present things to him while he's in the scanner. And this is a little bit freaky, because what Mats is seeing is actually this. He's seeing his own brain. So Mats is doing something here, probably he's going like this with his right hand because the left side is, is activated with, on the motor cortex. Right? And then he can see that at the same time. These visualizations are brand new, and, and this is something that we've been researching for a little while. This is another sequence of, of Mats's brain, and here we ask Mats to go to calculate backwards from 100. So he's going 100, 97, 94, and then he's going backwards. And you can see how the little math processor is working up here in his brain and is lighting up the whole brain. This is fantastic, we can do this in real time. We can investigate things, we can tell him to do things. You can also see that his visual cortex is activated in the back of the head, because that's where he's seeing, he's seeing his own brain, and he's also hearing our instructions when we tell him to do things. The signal is really deep inside of the brain as well, and it's shining through because all of the data is inside of this volume. Uh, and in just a second here you will see, okay, here, Mats, okay, now move your left foot, okay? So he's going like this, okay? For 20 seconds, it's going like that, and all of a sudden, it lights up up here. So we get motor cortex activation up there. So this is really, really nice, um, and, uh, and I think this is a great tool, and connecting also to the previous talk here, this is something that we could use as a tool to, to really understand how the neurons are working, how the brain is working, and we can do this with very, very high visual quality and very fast resolution. 
Now, we're also having a bit of fun at the center. So this is a CAT scan. I don't know if you can computer aided tomography. Okay. So this is a lion from the local zoo outside of Norrköping called Morden. Um, Elsa, uh, so she came to the center and uh, they sedated her and then put her straight into the scanner. And of course I get the whole data set from the lion. And I can do very nice images like this. I can peel off the layer of the lion, I can look inside of it. And you know, we've been experimenting with this and I think this is a great application for the future of this technology. Because there's very little known about the animal anatomy. What's known out there for veterinarians is kind of basic information. And we can scan all sorts of things, all sorts of animals. The only problem is to fit it into the machine. <laughs> okay, so here's a bear. Uh, it was kind of hard to get it in. Um, and you know, the bear is a cuddly, friendly animal. And here it is, here's the nose of the bear. And you know, you might want to cuddle this one until you change the functions and look at this. So be aware of the bear. All right. So with that, I'd like to, um, to thank all the people that have helped me to generate these images. Uh, it's a huge effort that goes into doing this, gathering the data, and developing the algorithms, writing all the software. So some very talented people. Uh, my motto is always, I only hire people that are smarter than I am. And most of these are smarter than I am. So thank you very much.